Jangan lupa subscribe dan hidupkan lonceng notifikasinya ya, agar tidak ketinggalan video-video terbaru IKPLN TV. Materials that is uh, presented by each speaker. And, and at the end of the session, we will have the Q&A session. So without further ado, I would like to invite uh, Miss Dia uh, Roro Esti to come forward to give her uh, keynote remarks. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May peace and blessings be upon you all. Honorable Member of Parliament, Ibu Ratna Juwita, and also um, particularly from the Green Economy Caucus. Uh, Mr. Dadan Kusdiana, who is the Director General of Renewable Energy and Energy Conservation from the Ministry of uh, Energy and Mineral Resources, Bapak Agus, also Director General from the Ministry of uh, Environment and Forestry, Bapak Herman Darnell, and Pak Satya Yuda, who are members of Indonesia's National Energy Council, Bapak Darwaman, Darmawan Prasojo, who is the President Director or CEO to PLN, the State-Owned Enterprise for Electricity, Honorable Speakers, Guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is important to recognize that Indonesia is very lucky given that this is a country, we are a country that is rich in resources both within the fossil fuel sector as well as the new and renewable energy sector. Currently, however, most of the energy resources or sources in Indonesia are still produced from fossil fuels consisting of coal, oil, and gas, reaching more than 80% in the current primary energy mix. It is fair to say that Indonesia is currently a fossil-dominated um, or driven economy. The urgency to carry out decarbonization is even greater due to the fact that fossil fuels as presented to us by the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources would be completely depleted in 9.5 years for oil, 19.9 years for gas, and roughly 65 years for coal. The data from the Energy Outlook as presented by the National Energy Council have illustrated that demand for energy, as you can see from the slides here on my right, will continue to rise as the time goes by from the years 2020 to 2050. And um, this will increase over the course of time and it coincides with the country's not only commitment um, but also its projection to become the fifth largest economy in the world by the year 2045, maximizing on its bonus or demographic dividend in which 70% of the total population in our country are of the productive age. And so this means that satisfying the demand for energy in order for us to do, th to do that, it's imperative to diversify our energy mix. Uh, not only to primarily combat the climate crisis, but is, this is actually a matter of survival. And so when we look at the next slide, the commitment for decarbonization is shown by the ratification of the Paris Agreement as amended by Law 16, Year 2016, as well as the Indonesian government's current revision of the nationally determined contributions to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from 29% to 31.89% with its own efforts, and also from 41% to 43.2% with international aid in 2030. Uh, the increase is an extra effort to achieve our net zero emissions target by 2060 or sooner, noting also that 34%, this is really important to recognize, of our greenhouse gas emissions in 2019 actually came from the energy sector. So there's a lot that we can do actually in terms of minimizing the levels of emissions. On a national level, we also have a target of achieving 23% renewables by 2025 um, as mandated through our energy policy, noting that currently 11.5% have been achieved and our immediate goal is to reach 15.7% by 2022. This is really ambitious, but I think uh, when we do the right things, we'll be able to achieve it. Considering also the di diversity of Indonesia's renewable potential, if we can look at the next slide. Oh, or the slide after this. 
Um, but there was a slide basically um, highlighting the kinds of renewable uh, energy located across the country. And it's really important to recognize that you know, we are a diverse country in terms of our resources. And uh, one of the things that we have to push forward is maximizing on our economies of scale. Our countries um, have committed for energy transition. This has been exemplified through various occasions in which President Joko Widodo have mentioned the need for this as an obligation of creating a sustainable future. Our coordinating minister of economic affairs as well as head of Sherpa of the G20, Mr. Erlanga Hartarto, have continuously urged the need for transition which have led to the establishment of the Energy Transition Working Group uh, at the G20 to boost cooperation across countries. When we speak of strategi uh, strategies of decarbonizing our energy sector, this consists of the need to, there are several things that I highlighted here, to create a policy framework that can help boost energy transition, to optimize on and incentivize cleaner energy sources, which can help make renewables more competitive within the energy market, create special economic zones across the country to boost economic activity, and solve the issue of electricity oversupply in several regions. Um, in terms of transitioning, we also have to, we are required to pay attention to uh, stranded assets, if any, when it comes to the fossil fuel sector. I think this is quite important. We have to consider the phasing out of coal where feasible, implement CCUS technologies, and particularly for the transportation sector, create an ecosystem for electric vehicles to flourish, in which uh, the state-owned enterprise of electricity is pioneering in this field. So I'd like to kind of shift our attention to the Low Carbon Development Indonesia, Indonesia Initiative under the Ministry of National Development uh, Planning, in which I was honored to be appointed as one of the commissioners alongside former Vice President, uh, sorry, Vice, uh, yeah, Vice President of Indonesia, Mr. Yusuf Kala. Uh, and, you know, they've presented that that there are several recommendations in several key sectors in order to achieve a net zero emissions future. And in the energy field, it's been recommended for us to reduce our energy intensity by 3.9 to 6% per year, and also consider removing subsidies for fossil fuels and implement a carbon pricing scheme with a price of around 40 to $60 per ton of CO2. Um, it's really important for us to shift our mindset, you know, noting that in order for us to achieve a, you know, um, a low carbon development, this means that there are many opportunities to come. And here there are some things highlighted. For example, this has the potential of creating more than 1.8 to 15.3 million additional jobs by 2030 and 2045. We can reduce extreme poverty to 4.2% of the population by 2045. We can save 40,000 lives every year by reducing air and water pollution. We can reduce even more greenhouse gas emissions. And I think when we focus on the kinds of benefits that we can reap from transitioning, our mindset changes and our priorities change. And I think this slide is really important for us to take home, for us to remember that actually there are so many opportunities when we speak of the need for transitioning. In the context of the policy support, given my role as a member of parliament, uh, together with the government, we are working on the new and renewable energy bill with the hopes that this can help make renewables more competitive within the energy market. Um, there's a lot uh, to be done, and this requires a multidisciplinary approach because in itself it is a multidisciplinary issue. And so when we work together collectively and understanding the end goal, I think this is the key for us to achieve and pass this bill in the future. And so this is just a little bit of um, some updates with regards to the bill in itself and the kinds of things that's been highlighted within the bill. And I wanted to show this because we had a discussion actually yesterday about this. 
Um, but I thought it'd be quite interesting for us to understand that when we speak of the reduction of emissions, I mean, we're in COP right now, and there are so many countries attending. And I think it's so important for us to recognize that each of us have the responsibility of decreasing our own greenhouse gas emissions. Indonesia is um, actually one of the areas that emit less in terms of the per capita when we compare with other countries like the US, like China, Canada, Saudi Arabia. So these are you know, the kinds of things that we have to think about, how these countries can maximize on reducing their greenhouse gas emissions, but also how can they support countries like Indonesia who need the support for us to decrease our greenhouse gas emissions. So I'd like to end this um, keynote. I'm so sorry if that was over time, but it's time for us to really just work together. We have a saying in Indonesia called gotong royong, which means collectively working together side by side and achieving a goal. And I think when we um, live upon that saying in itself, we can achieve amazing and wonderful things. So I'm grateful to be here, and I hope we have a very lively discussion. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Jangan lupa subscribe dan hidupkan lonceng notifikasinya ya, agar tidak ketinggalan video-video terbaru IKPLN TV.